Hi everyone, welcome to our podcast for Black Women Connect Vancouver. Girl, you know it. So I'm the founder of Black Women Connect Vancouver, which started in 2017. And Black Women Connect Vancouver is a collective of women who come to inspire, empower, and leverage our strengths and embrace our diverse experiences. It is a community where we can build meaningful relationships and celebrate the beauty of our Black womanhood. I hope that you enjoy it. everyone welcome back to the podcast my name is Balasa Natasia and I'm Jasmine. Jasmine. <laughs> <laughs> let me introduce you oh you see I'm not ready <laughs> can you start it again <laughs> this is we're keeping it we're um, keeping this, in. this is going to be bloopers this is going to be on Instagram anyway but it's fine we can um <laughs> I'll start it again, but we will intru- I will introduce you afterwards. <laughs> and go. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the podcast. I'm Palasa. Natasia. And I'm Elle. And you're listening to or watching Girl, You Know It. And today we have a wonderful guest with us. Maybe you might notice what the similarities are, okay? And maybe that gives it away, okay? We have two best friends here, okay? That's Natasia, like she said. And this is Njava Mukwavi. Njava, say hi to everyone. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us, NJ. How are you doing today? I'm good. It's Saturday. I'm chilling. It's a nice day. I'm good. Yeah, that's good. Um, Al and Natasia, how are you guys doing? Yeah, I'm chilling. It's been busy. <laughs> we're not going to go into our high achieving selves, but today we're going to down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm moving next week. So this is my, the last time you'll see this background in okay. our podcast videos. So I'm just getting started with that. But other than that, I'm good. I was annoyed this morning and then I saw y'all faces and I was like, okay, I just need black women in my life. And that's um, okay. what is the remedy. <laughs> are you all packed up or are you still going to be packing the rest of it? Oh, no. I'm a procrastinator <laughs> to the highest extent, even though I'm high achieving. It's a very weird balance to walk, but I will pack. It will get, it will get done. That's fair. I, I, I trust in you. I believe in you and I'm here for motivation. If you need it, FaceTime me and then put me up in the corner and I'll just supervise you. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll sing for you. I'll dance. It'll be great. <laughs> I won't crack the whip. No, I'll be really gentle. <laughs> um, so today we're going to be talking about sisterhood. Hence why Java is here. Um, But yeah, I'm super excited. I feel like this is going to be a little bit more of a like casual um, relationship conversation, (laughs) a casual relationship. Woo! Freudian slip. Uh -uh. Um, (laughs) So what does sisterhood mean to you folks? Java, wait, who are you? What do you Oh mean? yes, and Java, sorry, folks. Here, here I am in my comfort. Like I already know NJ and Java. <laughs> introduce yourself to our community. Sure. Um, brief introduction. Yeah, my name is Njavwa. Uh, currently in Toronto, was in Vancouver before, kind of in between the two right now. And I'm Natasia's youngest sister. Um, born in Zambia, grew up in Holland and different parts of Canada, so I'm kind of all over the place, but yeah, I'm not sure what else. <laughs> what do you do for work? Oh, for work? I work in international development, so that's my field. So right now I work for a not-for-profit, that a foundation that funds different like grassroots organizations across the African continent. And then I also volunteer on the side with Mercy Touch Mission International, which is an organization that my family founded based in Zambia. And then I also do help serve with um, Black Women Connect Vancouver on the board as well. So, Yeah, Jabba <laughs> is a superwoman. She's doing all of these amazing, wonderful things. We love it. But don't be fooled. Jabba does do self-care things. Jabba's all about self-care. She'll text me in the middle of a, a self-care <laughs> situation. And uh, she'll be like, do you remember that random conversation that we had? <laughs> I still remember it. And I'm like, yes. 
always um, self-care always mm-hmm. so what does uh sisterhood mean to you folks i'll let our guest start okay sure um i don't know i think it's like become a very it's a very broad term now because it can refer to a bond that you have with your biological sisters. It can refer to like bonds that you have with very close friends. Um, And now we have like all these sisterhood spaces, empowerment spaces coming up. So I think that it it encompasses like so many different things. Um, But yeah, it's it's like, it's a loaded question. So I think we have to tease it out a bit. 100%, I agree with you. Uh, Al? Yeah, I was gonna say, I really like, uh, NJ, what you said about like the broader sense, because I feel like um, there are people who have their biological sisters, but there's a lot of um, individuals who have chosen families, right? And so they build that sisterhood or that familyhood with their chosen people. And um, I think that a lot of, you know, immigrants who are coming here, they leave family behind and they have to figure out how to like navigate a new world. And they do that by building really strong bonds with, with friends who like become so much like sisters that sometimes your sisters are like, yo, uh, what am I, a top liver? And you're like, no, oh, love you, but also these are my sisters too, you know? So I feel like, yeah, it's a lot of teasing out the nuances of sisterhood. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. And I think for us too, because we moved around so much and we didn't grow up with like extended family. We didn't grow up with our cousins and stuff till later on in our lives and until we go back to Zambia. And so we just had to kind of develop that within ourselves as sisters because we also have an older sister, Mwaka, and she lives in America. And so for all of us, I think we had to find sisters within ourselves and then also outside with our friend group. So Mm. And that's so interesting because for me now, like when I was growing up, so I have three other siblings, two older sisters and a younger brother. And um, my oldest sister kind of lived away from home when I was younger. And so she always had this like disconnected relationship with her because of the distance. And uh, also because, you know, my parents were like, don't be like a step, don't be independent. Don't be, you know, too early because there's a specific time for you to be independent. If it's early, <clears throat> you're doing it wrong. Um, so you know she was gone but then my other sister and I my mom basically raised us like twins she dressed us the same all the time and even to this day we have a really strong bond but we also fight the most we also have the most conflict the most tension the most confrontation but also the most joy like we we used to do the craziest things like we'd lay in bed at night when it was time to sleep and we were sleeping in bunk beds and she'd come down and we'd like knock elbows together because we'd hit the funny bone and it'd just be like this fun thing that we do with laugh until we were exhausted then we'd go to bed like crazy things and then the one time (laughs) and then the one time she was laying on the she was asleep on the couch and I was annoyed at her so I took a cold jug of water and I poured it on her and then she woke up Kaiser did that (laughs) (laughs) so mean snores I'm like water I don't even snore that much yeah and it has a poured water no I don't no I don't and she hugs a blanket too oh yeah so what did you do after she poured the water? She just be like, Natasha. I think oh. it was Oh, <laughs> uh, no, my, no, you, okay. You, y'all are too nice to each other. Oh, my job would be nice to me. <laughs> Why? I didn't. Room. <laughs> when? Tell us. Tell I'm us. I'm fooled by this face. Tell us. Tell us more. Remember when you used to like, you threw something at my head one time or the time you bit me? Mm-hmm. mm hmm the lies i need that candy meme the lies no. that's how i feel right now <laughs> not true i don't even remember the story i, I don't i was one who got bit oh the oh. lies <laughs> that's so like classically sisters when you're like tell me which time tell me that one time that yeah. i did that thing Bring and the then i will receipt. apologize and then you're like <laughs> racking your brain being like it happened to me don't guess like me it happened no was- it was probably when we were like six years old and she had a bite. A bite it still bite. counts like- it's a whole <laughs> lifetime it still counts doesn't matter if you were six <laughs> <laughs> like, like, what? Um, i think i remember i only have like maybe one or two memories of us doing like having like physical fights it wasn't that bad. I don't we never really did 
we had that one time where dad like pulled us apart and I think that's when you that's the happened. one that I'm remembering yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like 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 tape roll and she like threw it at my head oh. and then I was like <laughs> and I was like I hate you and then we like started like, just, like <laughs> punching each other and then like my dad like pulled us apart and he's like say you're sorry and we're like yeah no. that was <laughs> Yeah, I remember that. I think we like, didn't talk for like a month or something. <laughs> but we were really young. Like, we, were, we were like teenagers. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I have a question. In, if for all of that, with our sisters who are biological, did your did your parents ever pull that line on you? Stop fighting. You You're only all have people. you all that you have. You need to do that. Have you seen people on Maury? Like they are not even like family. Like my mom pulled that out. Like look at them fighting. Like look at the, like all the like random shows. She's like you don't want to deal with them. You need to love your sisters because they're all you have. And you're like, oh ew, gross. And then when you get older, you're like, oh, you are all I have. Are, yeah. <laughs> Like, this is my OG best friend for yeah. my birth. We're best friends forever. You always got to have my back. What is Maury's? Maury, the Maury, show. The the show. Short show. Oh, it's kind of like very Springer-ish type. Yes. Uh, like same type of, yeah. Drama. Like trash TV, yeah. Yeah. At first she get mad that we were watching it and then she get mad that we we're fighting and then, you know, comparing our friends. <laughs> always comparing. African parents stay comparing. Always. Why aren't you cooking like her? Why aren't you cleaning like her? Look at her. Every time her mom asks her something, she just gets up and does it. So have her as a child. Oh, her <laughs> Don't get the get the child. I mean, honestly, it's really it's really frustrating. <laughs> wow. It's true. But yeah, we grow very similar to what you just said. Like our sister, there's a nine-year age gap between us, and so we are a year and like two months apart so we were raised like very similarly all our pictures we were dressed like dressed alike and stuff like that and then so it's probably like now yeah (laughs) still matching yeah you also keep it up no I was done with that all of my birthday pictures I'm just like um look like my sister and I'm just like but I'm like my I'm I'm my own person this is my birthday why does she look like people are going to be confused like who are you (laughs) shouting for her or me why are you doing this to us but it was really, really cute. I do, I do definitely remember um, like what you were saying, you know, my mom being like, don't fight each other. Like, don't, don't, don't not talk to each other and stuff like that. And I think on some level that builds my resilience with like the way that I deal with current relationships and friendships as well, especially with other women. But it's really interesting because I feel like, I feel like if I'm upset at, my sister I can't reason it or rationalize it the same way that I can rationalize being upset with you folks right I can't be like you know this step one step two step three it's always it's always like bring back all of the memories from childhood (laughs) everything (laughs) this comes to the forefront I'm like I'm only dealing with this small situation why are you bringing in the rest of our lives so true it's so true and I always like I talk about this too of like I actually can notice when women have grown up with brothers versus when they've grown up with sisters because the way they argue and disagree is actually so much more different because they realize they think like when you argue it's like kind of like the end of a friendship or like it's really dramatic like to have a conflict because the resolution kind of isn't there or um, they just react completely different versus friends who've had sisters I feel like there's more of a like rationale behind it like you said like there's these steps of like let's talk it out blah blah blah. whereas like my friends who only had brothers they kind of are like don't know what to do because like usually like the brothers are more like physical in their arguments you know what I mean and they're over it whereas like we have to talk it out we have to discuss it like you said we bring up everything and so like when you do that with your other friends it's like oh we just disagreed like I just wanted to talk about it but like some of my other friends will take it as like like there's something wrong like do you do I do I need to be doing better like it's like this freak out in their mind so that's one thing I also noticed like certain friends that have only had brothers Mm. do you know what that brings up for me is this idea of like boundaries and I think that for me setting boundaries with you know especially why do I want to be this honest okay so (laughs) usually when I create boundaries with people especially like um female friends is at the end of the line I'll be like no you've like hurt me so many times blah 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 I'll create this boundary but I also cut off the relationship at the very same time right and that's like that firm boundary and I feel like now I'm learning to have relationships where I can set boundaries and the boundaries aren't like ultimatums but 
you know, if somebody is mm-hmm. like, you know, your sister or your homegirl or whatever, and the person repeatedly, repeatedly crosses your boundary over and over again, where do you, where do you make that reasoning? Like, I really do love this person, but also I love myself. And like, you know, even though I've been taught to don't, you know, not talk to somebody for a long time, forgive, forgive, forgive again and again and again, it gets really exhausting. How do you, I don't know how anyone else deals with that, but I'm, I'm lost. I think that's a really good point. Cause I find that I have different boundaries with different friends, depending on one, like their personalities or like what they're going through in life. Like it, it's not the same for all of my friends. So I just kind of adjust it depending on the person. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, that's a really good point that you brought up. You know, I think that I'm, I'm taking it back to like my sisters and I love them all dearly, but like, and now as we're adults, we've been able to negotiate our boundaries and also to like recognize each other's boundaries. And so we don't even have to cross them. We don't, like we know how to engage. Mm-hmm. Whereas like, it kind of goes back to like this competitive nature in terms of like, how far can I push someone or like how far, you know, you know, and, and I think that like learning that at, in my teenagehood helped me to go, okay, you know, when I'm dealing with other friends, female friends, this is how I want to deal with them. But I think with my sisters, there's also like, a, well, you're always going to be there for me and I'm always going to be there for you. And like, yes, forgiving is exhausting and I'm not saying this to be like there, there's any strife at all but like I just remember a time in my life when I just let them continually break boundaries or I continually break their boundaries and we weren't good at talking because we were still we're still bringing up or holding on to past like we were regressing in our arguments so now it's like when we're talking there's always boundary set and that's actually really been freeing because then we can have really honest frank conversations and not be afraid that like oh I'm gonna hurt her feelings it's like you know that I'm coming from a place of love and I know now how to navigate with one sister and not do the same thing for the other one because exactly. if I them, you are yeah. in trouble like don't even get it twisted so I feel like I feel like I'm still working on it but boundaries is also a really good thing in sisterhood mm-hmm. or no definitely and I think yeah, I agree. Like you just treat everyone differently. And like you said, with the boundaries, because you know, because as sisters, you know what triggers which sister. Yeah. You know the one thing that can set her off. And so it's like, if you like press that button, like that one explodes and then the other sister's like, she didn't mean it that way. And then everyone's trying to be like, come together. And then there's this kumbaya, like, and it's, <laughs> yeah, it's always, it's like the same cycle, but yeah, we still do it. And like, even though we grow in it, it's like a different kind of growth with the same kind of arguments that just look different in your growth because it's not as aggressive anymore if that makes sense it's like it's still there and like we'll like you, you argue but it's like a different kind of argument it's not like like when you're young we're like I hate you're you more intentional I think yeah like we're more intentional about those conflicts and like how to work through them and then when you're young you just you just fight <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And Jeff and I have talked about this too, of like, even in terms of sisterhood, like like friends that we've made, and we'll see like, they one don't know how to make friends with other women, or also don't know what it looks like to have a friend group that actually supports you as women. And Mm -hmm. that's something that we've realized growing up, it's like, we are privileged to have that. um, Because it's like, one, we did that for ourselves as sisters. And our parents put that in, like, instilled that with us. But also just growing up, we just had good friends, like, we actually were grateful to have good friends. I mean, obviously there's been bad friends in our twenties, especially, but like we were, we were fortunate enough to know what sisterhood looked like from a very young age. So for us progressing into like adulthood and making friends, it was an easy transition and knowing the type of people you wanted around you of what was healthy and what wasn't healthy. But then like some friends that we have met, like in the past or recently it's like they they've never seen that before they've never had that one like even like good friend or a sisterhood like and so that's like something I'm wondering about is like was that a transition for all of you to like to see that or you were also like oh this is like something that was an easy transition I find that those are the most frustrating friendships where it's like you're, you're like it's not like you have to prove yourself, but it's, it's like, I have no ill intent. Like I actually want the best for you. I actually want to see you succeed, but they're just so used to like not having that or not having experienced that. So then you end up having to draw a boundary for yourself because you're like, okay, this person is not yeah. like understanding that I really care about them and I'm really rooting for them, but they're 
So yeah, those friendships are so frustrating, especially when it's someone that like you really love genuinely and like you really want to support, but at, you do also have to have boundaries with those people because at the end of the day, like if they're not loyal to you as well, like you also have to be fair to yourself. So yeah. Yeah, I think for me, it was a, it was kind of a combination of both because I, even though I had um, extended family that were like my cousins, were, we were raised very closely. So we were raised like sisters. Um, so I, I've actually, there's a lot of like women in my family. Now that I think about it, I think more than the men. Yeah, now that I think about it. So we've always had kind of this idea of like, you know, what coming together looks like, what sisters coming together looks like, what women working together looks like and living together. But then um, I always hung out in terms of friends with boys. I think at one point there were like 13 of us in the friend group and there was like me as the girl and then there were like 12 other boys. And we'd go to like what we used to call a jungle because remember when you're little the whole world feels like it's massive and then um when I grew up it was actually like under a bridge it's so funny we thought it was like this big jungle that we had to climb to and had to run up and all this stuff and then I drive under it and I'm like oh this is a really small bridge awesome great um but go getting into high school I, I had a really big challenge with um making female friends and making friends in general, but mostly female friends. And I think that's because I didn't have, I didn't know how to really make friends because I didn't know how to like chase somebody like that, like to chase somebody that wasn't already like as interested in me as I was interested in them. Um, and I think for me, that's been a lot of the times with women rather than with men um, for obvious reasons. <laughs> <laughs> um, but also my brain, what's inside here? <laughs> uh, I'm such a troll. Um, yeah, but it's always been really challenging. But I also think now that I look back, it's always been like, um, I have to prove or be the best version of myself in front of other women because that's who my role models were. And so it was a little bit harder to get there because I didn't want to keep playing the prove game. I didn't want to have to like, you know, always have the self-confidence or always be in the know or all the stuff because I wasn't. I was a very nerdy, shy, believe it or not, girl when I was growing up. Wow. Um. Wow. I mean, that. <laughs> but yes, sorry. Yeah. No, it's okay. I'm just like, what's coming up for me when you're saying that was like the proving thing. And that kind of goes back to what, um, Angela, you were talking about, like, I'm here as, as like well-intentioned as a friend and like I don't want to have to keep proving to you that I'm a good friend like I have to take care of myself and I have to feel comfortable in my skin and not have to, and feel comfortable in my friend group and and who I trust and I'm thinking back to like me growing up and like I had my sisters but I went to a very small religious school and I was one of the guys that I don't, like I was exactly like you I was hanging out with guys and that kind of thing um, and then I went into nursing, which was like a huge shift. Went from like all these guys to like only females. And for the first little bit, it was really hard because like I didn't know how to engage with someone who didn't know me from the get go, like my sisters, right? Like I was so used to the only females that I really engaged with, my being my sisters. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, okay, cool. Now I have to get used to like. 70 females in my class and like going to a profession that's all females and go wow sometimes us women are annoying and frustrating and emotional and I'm not just being like trolling on women I'm just saying like that's just generally sometimes it is and I'm like I just missed the days when I was hanging out with the guys and it was just simple and I was just like sitting there and they're playing their stupid board games and stuff but transitioning into female friendships at work and like now like going into like friendships and building those lifelong friends. Um, having sisters helped, but it was a big, uh, it was a big like Natasia pouring water all over my face. Being like, oh shit. Like, yeah. oh, cool. That's rad. a great analogy. Yeah. I want to use it, I want to pull it out. I want to use it all the time. I'm going to use it all the time, <laughs> all the time now. <laughs> That's why I don't share beds with people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're the problem. It's you. Wow. <laughs> I, everyone knows I'm a light sleeper. Just give me my own bedroom. Give me my own bed. 
one of her problems. Oh, this was like sleeping. I thought she was just oh. laying on the couch innocently. Oh, no. I was sleeping no. innocently. <laughs> I was sleeping. <laughs> That's worse. That's so startling. <laughs> <laughs> So much worse. Listen, she just like chose the violence just for no reason. She's like, she was no, like, you were loud. There is a reason. I, was... like, I do everything with reason. Um, Anyways, back to the topic. Yeah, I was actually going to say it's interesting that you two shared those experiences because I find that I do not have any guy friends. Like, yeah. I look at best, like, I've never had a guy best friend. I've never had like a close, like, I've been cool with guys, whatever, but I've never had like close guy b- friends. Like, I can't think of one person. So it's interesting that, like, I wonder how my experiences, like, with my sisters and my family has maybe influenced that, I guess. Well, yeah, no, and I both had guy friends. Like, I maybe was, it's like, just me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you're the like, problem. problem. <laughs> I'm the problem. I'm like, why do I not have any guy friends? You're yeah. not a problem, NJ. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Because I was a lot more of a tomboy and I was like friends with everybody kind of thing. But like it was easy for me with the, to be with the guys, but it was also really easy for me to be with like the women too. So for me, but it was did like, you, you didn't have like a best, like you didn't have like a best guy friend or anything, did you? I'm like, yeah, like I was think. really close to certain people. Because yeah. I got along with guys well, but like I didn't. No, I, I did. Yeah. It was like, yeah. even in high school and stuff, the thing is like, I think for me, what happened with that being friends with both, like, I think when you're just in one area, it doesn't matter. But when you're friends with both, I've noticed that like the girls in high school, especially things like that, or that, that age group, they would get upset that I was friends with the guys they would like. And then I would be in the middle and I'm like, I don't even like them. They're literally just my friends. And then they'd be like, well, they like to talk to you like this, or they do this. I'm like, if he picks me up, it's not because it's flirting. It's because he's being obnoxious. And I didn't ask for it. Like, I was like, like <laughs> things like that, like I noticed would happen or to be like, I heard Baba Baba likes you. And I'm like, okay, cool. They're my friend though. So I don't care. Like I noticed that started happening with me. And then that would make me a lot more hesitant to be friends with certain girls. Um, but that's just that. But I don't know, like for me and my experience growing up and s- sometimes now, um, do you ever have an issue when you're making friends and you're friends with someone, for example, but then your other friends like, I thought we were friends. And then I'm like, we are. And it's like, they can't handle that you're friends with someone else or close to someone else. Has that ever like, cause that's been my experience, honestly, since like I, I can remember that's always happened to me um either sisters being mad I was friends with their sister or like friends who were mad that I was closer friends with that person I don't think yeah no I, I don't think it's ever happened to me I'm not as popular as Natalia it's like the most petty thing <laughs> I've ever <laughs> apparently she's just falling off being like I'm loved by everyone it's like everyone <laughs> wants to be my <laughs> best friend be my friend <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm not trying to. <laughs> so sorry. I'm literally the poster child of no new friends, like really guys. <laughs> um, that's very interesting. I don't. I feel like. I feel like. I haven't had people jealous of me being friends with other people. I think that I use it in a jokey way with my friends. Um, and like, a, you know, how, how, like even with you folks, right? Like when I'll know something that I don't, right? Which we should all know as fair friendships go, um, you know, stuff like that. You know what I mean? And so I don't think that I've ever had people competing to be my friends or like wanting to be solely just one friend um but I think that where it can come from because I noticed with one of my friendships now uh like we really get on but we also have such a rich friendship that we can have space with each other we can you know make boundaries we can have arguments we can have conflicts or disagreements you know we can talk about things he did and then we can also go and like create in the woods and sing right and so um when, when, when they started to get somebody and they started to spend a lot of time with somebody, right? I felt like, uh-uh, how can you be this excited about somebody when all the time you met me, you were like, you're the most exciting person I've ever met. You're this, you're that, you know, it changed my life. And I'm like, I'm not seeing you over these days, but this other person is seeing you. And so I think it's this idea of like getting the attention and getting 
to remember and to feel that you're loved and to understand that like even if somebody is enamored by somebody else it doesn't diminish how they feel about you it has it really has nothing to do with you right and it's like they can do that and still exist in your friendship too and I had to learn that um again in that moment so I was like "Uh -uh, don't play with me right I am the best thing since, in fact I am sliced bread okay people say the best thing since sliced bread I'm I am the sliced bread okay um but yeah that's been my experience <laughs> so now I know I can never lose Palessa as a friend she will scrap her way and I will yeah. not. you know what I'm not gonna chase you out but you know what the truth is is that you're never gonna leave <laughs> never oh. <laughs> Well, uh, that's what I said. I was like, y'all know too much now. So I'm stuck with you. <laughs> never leaving. <laughs> Always in my web. I'm your wingspan. You're in <laughs> my <laughs> wingspan. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, okay. So I, okay, now I'm not retracting, but I do exactly, I know what you mean. Like there's a jealous, it's not jealous. Forgiveness. Yeah, and you're negotiating your friendship as you move along and as like new people come into their lives and as new people move into yours. And I think those friendships that stand the test of time are those ones where you are open and you can have those really good conversations about like how your emotions are like feeling in your body and like like the 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 state of your relationship and going like I haven't seen in a while like I'm sad I miss you like let's do something and like voicing those opinions because I know that like if that happened to me like let's say even five years ago without like the growth that I've had I'd be like okay bye like you don't want this Mm -hmm. bye like I don't wait for you whereas now it's like the people that I want in my life the women that I want to continue my life I'm just negotiating as well being like it's not about me like you said it's not about me it's them also creating spaces and relationships and networks for themselves yeah. that mm-hmm. that sustain them and give them life just like they help give me life so yeah 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 that's very true I think it's just like all about fostering connection and it's like, like that it's kind of how I started to go about it. I'm like okay you're just upset because you miss me and I'm like okay how can we evaluate our relationship moving forward like is there something that I feel like I should be doing better in our friendship and so sometimes it sounds so lame to be like having conversations about friendships because I think sometimes people enter friendship as like we're friends nothing's gonna go wrong we're never gonna argue and I'm like are you in any relationship because any relationship you're in whether it be your friends your family like romantic whatever platonic it's you're going to have disagreements you're going to argue it's how you kind of recover from it and how you talk about your feelings during that time mm-hmm. yeah i think like I what you said you're you are always negotiating because like your friends will have kids they'll get married like your friendship will always look different at different points in your life whatever journey that you're on like you have to have those conversations because your expectations of them now might not be like what they were when you first started being friends so yeah yeah I think it's really interesting for you to say that Andrea because you know what came up for me was like this idea of when you said you know your friends will have kids almost like there's this longevity of having friends right and I I made it I made a post about this the other day I don't have like lifelong friends I don't have friends like this is my high school friend this person lived next to me and we became the best of friends like my friends are like probably the longest excluding my partner and maybe like other friends probably like four or five years maybe uh those friends that I've had and they're like really really solid relationships but I always felt like there was something wrong with me I always felt weird to not be able to galvanize that like long lasting like oh you yeah. see me through my all of these things you know and my and yeah. and I and I felt for a very long time that I was missing out on something but I was just doing what COVID forced people to do now so but I think that like I have the same experience I think because moving around so much and like with my work traveling so much is that I don't have that like this is my childhood friend that stuck to me like I don't have that but the friendships that I have now are very intentional and they're very like deep friendships Mm -hmm. Um, whereas like some people who do have those connections with like their childhood friends or like they might not have that same level of deepness as well so I mean it goes both ways Mm -hmm. because some people keep friends around just because they've been friends forever but that doesn't mean that they actually are adding anything to their lives as well so I think that yeah yeah and I would even and I would even say like 
me as a child, me as a teenager, I'm completely different. Like I could not have a thousand percent. I could not have those friends. They're not healthy for me. I'm not healthy for them. We are very different. Um, So I think to go back to what you're saying, plus, I don't think it's a bad thing that you don't have these like lifelong friends. I think as you learn and as you become self-aware, some people are going to be more advanced in their growth. That means you can't bring them along with you. You know, you can't do that. Like it's just not possible. And and you can really not invest in so many people, right? So like you need to have exhausting. It's too exhausting. (laughs) And those are small, yeah. Completely. And those are the friends that I left behind, the people who were trying to collect friends as like, but you could see that they're acquaintanceships. Like you are not invested in like what actually is happening with me. I'm trying to make that relationship with you, but it's not important. And that's okay. Like that's who you are, but I can't, I, I'm leaving you here. Like I'm just gonna drop you off. I'm gonna head off on this exit and pick up some new people. I'm like, oh, those are the people, those are my people now, you know? And it doesn't always have to be like this like dramatic event of like tears and break. Like sometimes it just phases out and like, that's okay. Yeah. I mean, Insecure, because I rewatched it, like, new season's coming, um, and the last season was about that, right, and she wanted to focus on that, and she said, she's like, the hardest breakups I've ever had was my friendship breakups, and I think we don't talk about that enough, because it really does affect us um, emotionally, too, um, and also our view of moving forward of what kind of friendships we do want, and so, um, or if it's worth salvaging, right, so I think that sometimes, like, those are the things we also have to, like, kind of think about, too, of, like, what does that look like when we do get to a point where it's like it can either go this way or it can go that way or should it just not be anything um and so I really appreciated that she actually did focus on that because I think that's something mm-hmm. that we don't talk about enough everyone focused so much on the that was my favorite I think that's like my favorite season so far <laughs> because it was so true to like what it was right like those small arguments can get into something bigger and then you bring up your past and then it's like we're not even talking about the issue anymore at hand like that wasn't even the first problem in the first place she just missed her friend and then it just kept going like we talked about and yeah and then it exploded into what it did so I think it's interesting that we started talking from like sisterhood and like I've gone into the friends because before this podcast I was like trying to think of like hey sisterhood what do I think about sisterhood and then I was like trying to differentiate sisterhood and friend like what is like really the difference here like there's so many things that overlap between the two terms so I was like yeah yeah Yeah. I think at the end of the day uh it it also goes back to you know liking people actually outside of the title that they have so like just because your family just because you're my sister just because you're my brother just because you know this is the title that society is giving you excuse me doesn't mean that I have like I I actually like you and I actually want to you know build a relationship with you where I want to be intentional and I want to invest in your growth and a lot of the times you might not you, you might not be that way with me either. And you, uh, what I wanted to curiously bring up for anybody in the community, and I don't know if you folks have had this experience, but you know, for anybody who's had to um, make that choice of like separating from your sisters, especially because this topic is about sisterhood, um, if it's not too, you know, triggering or traumatic, um, let, what was that experience like? Like, what are some things that you would have to go through? Because I'm curious to see if indeed the, the worst breakups are with your friends or with your sisters, right? In that way, going back to what the insecure thing said, because I feel like having an estranged relationship with your sister is also kind of similar-ish. Um, I have an estranged relationship with a sister, um, you know, but because because she was never really in our lives like that, like the relationship was never there or able to be built either. But a part of me still feels like, did I miss a connection like did I miss something did I miss something that could have been the sweet relationship because of like family drama whatever the case might have been so I don't know I'm curious yeah I mean we've never had that but we've had friends who've had that um and like walking them through that or having to like have discussions it's been interesting I think it's it's hard to to see it it's hard to have those conversations because obviously you see that kind of longing to be close to that person but because so much has either happened or something happened and or that person's actually just toxic to them they had to let that go um that's usually been our experiences where it's like it's it sucks but like java says then it, it comes into our friendship of you also not trusting me either of like because you're just so scared now because of that relationship mm. or you cling on too hard because you're scared that will leave mm. so 
I don't know, I don't know if I've told you this, but I have an older half sister. Um, and we, I've never had any type of relationship with her. And that's really because I was born here in Vancouver and she was my dad's first wife's child in um, Nairobi, Kenya. So that, it doesn't feel like it's a strange so much as like almost like a stranger because like I just never grew up with her. It was never, um, it, there was never really any opportunity for that to happen. Um, so that's kind of similar plus to what you're saying about your, your older sister, like there's not there, but, but I mean, I wish I'd known her, but there's not like this, this sadness because I've never actually had any points of contact outside of like one, one time. So it, it feels very much like a stranger. On the other hand, I, in my youth was a little bitty. And when I would get really mad, I would ice out people. Like I would just like cold chill with them. So I did that once to my sister, Char. I did it for like almost a year. I was so wow. mad at her. It was like, anyways, we are now way past that. That was like literally almost 10 years ago. Um, but it was awkward because I was so mad and you're, we're still like kind of living-ish in the same realm. My mother was still trying to be like, this is your only sisters. Like you have to get along. Like it felt like uh, a little bit like a death of a relationship. I wasn't sure how it was going to be reconciled. Um, again, because we were so young, we we're babies, we we're baby adults, right? So you, everything seemed so big. Um, but I mean, we reconciled and so that worked out really well. I, I can't compare it to a friendship that's died because the friendships that have died have been kind of like NJ said, like they just fizzled out. They weren't mm -hmm. meant to be. And so it wasn't as sad or traumatic. It wasn't like a, a Molly and Isa type thing. Mm -hmm. Fortunately. Has we had that though. Oh, but a I, Molly and Isa situation? I definitely had a few. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've had anything that like like that either actually like that dramatic like they've always been three or four instances yeah you have I can actually think of yours <laughs> like, really? they were bad yeah. they were bad yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> that was my spill the tea I know I was like 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 I was asking if you put <laughs> water on them to like diffuse the situation <laughs> I, want, I, want, I want some tea. I want a big, like okay, big. The first, one, the first one, I was a teenager, or yeah, I was a teenager, and um, I was also like just a little bummed out because like my best friend started dating someone and I knew they were gonna get married and I, I was sad because like she was moving on without me and I so I was like excited like to miss her and so I started to like make like things where like I'd make comments or I started to ice her out and I was just like well whatever like if you want to be my friend you don't want to be my friend. Um, and then I remember one time even calling her and I was like, we need to talk. And I like called her up and I was like, I just feel like he's like in your life and he's taken over and like, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I just don't feel like we should be friends anymore. And she was like, so heartbroken. I felt like when I look at me back, but I was like a teenager. Right. And, um, looking back at it now, I was like, Ooh, I was so dramatic. And she just kept trying. Like she kept trying, she kept trying so hard to like salvage it, but I was just so over it. Like the thing about me is like, I'm loyal to the core, but once I'm done, I'm done. Like yeah. there isn't a, let's revive this. Um, and I didn't hate her or anything. I did also know like consciously, like I was doing it because I was sad. I was missing my friend. And I just knew once they got married, they got married and I would be out of everything. So even when she got married, I was like sad too. Cause I'm like, I know I would have been like at the wedding, but it was just like, like I, I still got invited and stuff and it was like, great. But yeah, that was like one instant that was my fault. The other instances have not been my fault. Um, and I noticed that you you will you will do you always have like a meeting when you're like about to break up with a friend because yeah. you're, you're like more confrontational. So it'll be like like I remember one of them like came to our house and it was like I was just like sitting in the corner and they were having like this deep discussion about it and stuff. Whereas I think with me, I'm, I'll just be like, I'll just distance. Yeah, I just cut people out. No, I no, I don't cut. I don't even do it dramatically. I just like just don't talk myself. about. <laughs> like I'm not like I hate yeah, you. Or, like, <laughs> I'm just like my boundary yeah. is just I just like distance myself and go on with my life. <laughs> yeah, I think for me, I just want to make sure that everything got cleared before we're done. I don't want it to be like gossips here of like Natasha said this, she did this to me. I'm like, let's just clear the air and then we're good. Like. I feel this way, you feel that way, and we move on. Like, there's nothing more to talk about after this. So I think that's usually why I'll just, like, have a talk. Like, I every time I do have to have a talk, I'm, like, 
hyperventilating or I get nervous. I'm like, what if I don't say the right thing? Because I do want to have like some dignity because it's like, obviously we're friends for a reason. I And I appreciate and cherish all my friendship and throughout my life. And so I, if we are going to end this, I want it to also end with like some sort of dignity and respect on both ends. Closure. Um, yeah. And I don't think I've ever had like an explosive thing with anybody. I think I've had like explosive situations, but never like we're yelling at each other or like arguing, things like that. Um, it was more just like the situation was just not healthy for me that I, I had to fully remove myself. And I wanted to let them know why I removed myself. And, and one of the instances was like, even like after my car accident, it's like, that one friend that emailed me and I was like, you literally are like on the list of one of my best friends. And you tell me when I'm in a serious car accident across the world that you emailed me. Like when I asked you, why didn't you call me? Like, those are the things that I'm just like, we can't do this. And then when we did meet up, she starts crying and I'm like, how is this about you? <laughs> like, like those, that's when I was like, this isn't worth. So after that, I was just like, that was one of the instances I just like cut that person out and I was like, delete their number. I'm like friends with their siblings still. But like, I just like, that's what I mean. It's like, I'm not mean. I just separate myself, but I'm like, hey, if your family's cool, I'm cool. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you slide into them home DMs yeah, right there. Like, yeah. Get a little bit closer. Exactly. I'm like, if our friends are cool, like just yeah. because we're not cool doesn't mean I need to hate everyone around you. Yeah. <laughs> Because also then pe the people that you do know in common don't have to take sides, especially if there's oh, like yeah, a awful. common a common resolution. I feel like I had that um, with probably one of the biggest like the 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 scenario I was talking about earlier. But I feel like it came from a point of like I felt very disrespected and like people that were there also could notice it and could see it and it was something that was very very clear but when I had to sit down conversations because I had a few I was like is there anything wrong like did I do something maybe that you know you can only really come out and say it when you're drinking like what's really happening you know and then you know she was like no there's nothing blah 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 it was just a one time it happened again in front of everybody when I was having my my um I was in a band once and we were having a performance in my studio and then at the end of the night stop something happened then so once again I tried hey come on you know let's have a seat let's talk about this and then my resolution was you know if you if if drama only starts off when we're drinking let's not drink together let's hang out I can hang out with you we can go to picnics we can drink tea all this stuff but let's just not drink together. And that was a no-go zone for them. That was like, a, how dare you set an ultimatum for me? How dare, you know, this, none of my friends have set ultimatums before. My friend, uh, like this has happened with other people and they're okay with it. How come you're the one who has a problem? And for me, it was like, you know me, you know what my relationship to alcohol is. You know what my history is, you know, with other people in my family who, uh, you know, have stuff with alcohol. Like, I don't want to be with somebody who is going to chastise me when they're induced. Yeah. What I'm saying is not, let's not be friends. I'm saying, let's make our friendship better for the both of us. And that confused me for the longest time because I felt guilty for that. I felt like, you know, I was taking away something from them and I, I was wrong for protecting myself and for holding that up. And for the longest time, I was like, I'm scared to make new friends because like, if I feel like setting a boundary, what is going to happen? Am I wrong to do this? Wow. Well. Wow, that's wild. And like my my heart hurts for past Belessa to feel like, you know, I don't want to make friends because boundary setting is wrong. No, that means yeah. that's not never, ever, ever on the person setting the boundary. If that person's a ride or die or a true friend or a sister, like within a sisterhood, they should be like, wow, thank you so much for feeling safe enough to come to me and have exactly. this conversation. That just means that, that that person wasn't ready to hear it. Like, especially when you hear her say other friends have ha this has happened to them and they said nothing. I'm like, oh, then are they your friends? Mm -hmm. And are they your friends? Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, that's like toxic. Has toxic. anybody been like, because we have all have toxic traits. Um, yeah. Is there anything in a sisterhood or friendship that you felt like, oh, wow, if I had changed that toxic trait, maybe that friendship would have lasted. Or I did like a certain thing that was really toxic in that friendship or in a sisterhood that I should fix or you have grown for. Well, yes, it's the icing out. Like I used to be so good at that. Like, like now I can like, I can, I can taper it. I can go, I'm just gonna have, give myself some space. And then a couple days later or something, I'll have a conversation. But that was a toxic trait. I would just be like, I'm done. 
and like you can reach out to me but i'm not gonna reach out to you that's it i'm like sometimes yeah you you f with me and i'm done so yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to think um I think for me like I can't think of like crazy like crazy breakups that I've had but I think for me is that I tend to detach a lot like I'm always kind of in my own little world that sometimes I forget like to put more into like certain people or, like more friend or into like more friendships I think that's my something that I'm working on because I'm like I'm just I'm like a thousand percent introvert like I know I'm just always in my own world that I think that um that's something yeah, that would be mine. But I ha- I don't know if I've had like a fight over it, not yet, or maybe friends are feeling it and just haven't told me. I don't know. <laughs> they don't want to be detached from you. Yeah, they're like, <laughs> survive. We'll just live with it. <laughs> All of NJ's friends, please tell her. Tell her what she said. <laughs> um, comment below. <laughs> comment below. Um, I don't know about a toxic trait. I feel like similar to you, NJ, like I'm very much okay with being by myself and on my own. And not that I forget to invest in people. I think I switch very quickly. Like I'm either like very much in my own thing or like yeah. very much in your thing. Like if I am about you, uh, baby cakes, you are not getting rid of me, okay? I am. Mm-hmm. I will learn all of your hobbies. We will do all of the stuff together. You draw, bitch, I draw too, okay? You wanna sing? Let's start a band. Like I am here yeah. for it. So, and I think that sometimes that's very overwhelming for people. And I think for me, it was also having to do with like searching for my identity and how to be an individual and how to show people that I'm interested in them without having to turn into them. I think that was my toxic trait is that I was very much like, oh, in order to be best friends with you, let's be alike. And I'll do everything that you do. And then I noticed that people weren't pouring back into me or like, you know, when that friendship ends or they get other friends and they do other stuff or they go away on holiday, I'm just sitting there waiting for them to get back because I haven't really like started my own thing. I don't know how to keep myself busy, how to enjoy myself. But then once there's been that long separation from people, it's very hard to get back into people's things because I'm like, you don't like what I like. I'm not here for you. The Lord will give me the people who are just like me. That's all I want. So Did I think you ever see that quote, favorite. that quote that was like, I won't go for coffee for you, but I will die for you. I was like, that is like, that's so me. <laughs> like I'll be there and I'll, I'll fight for my friends. I'll do everything. But there's just some moments where I'm just like, I need space. <laughs> 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 so yeah, all or like oh, very all or nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I have no toxic traits, so. Oh, <laughs> this chick. Wow. Oh, she's your friend. Everyone okay. is so popular. I'm so amicable. So popular, I'm so popular. Like, you know. I think for me, one thing I need, I realized um, was unintentionally, like, for me, unintentionally hurting people. And when people would confront me about it, I'd be like, I didn't mean to hurt you. Like, it was like, kind of like a, it wasn't my intention so cool but it was it's damaging because I'm not acknowledging their feelings for me even if it was unintentional because to me I'm like you should know I'd never try to hurt you but that wasn't the conversation and so for me I had to like kind of step out of myself and be like okay remove your pride and be like step into this person's emotion and if you even if it was unintentional that's something that you do need to address of like I'm may have like said something because I can be really sarcastic and stuff and that can be hurtful sometimes to people and um and then also like yeah just in general I think I was just realizing I'm like oh okay I should probably apologize or like acknowledge that I did hurt your feelings uh so that's something that that took me a while I remember one time someone like I texted them because I text randomly right like I'm not like a you know like I'll text random things and so I think I just like texted them they're like Sometimes you just don't even say like, hey, how are you? And I'm like, end? Like, <laughs> and I was I do like, that too. Irritated. And then I was like, and then I'm like, wait, if this person really does need to hear, hey, in the first part, I do need to acknowledge that that's something they want in an acknowledgement that I'm having a conversation with them. Even if for me, like you can text me randomly and I don't care, right? Um, but that's something I had to learn to actually actively do with that person. And then also in general, I should probably start doing that. Um, but yeah, that was one thing I'm like, oh, okay this does affect the way a person receives a message even if I'm like oh this would be funny but they're like uh you need to check up on me yeah your toxic trait is pride yes in short I said that first of all (laughs) I just want to clarify for everyone 
<laughs> Even if it's like a relationship, and I know we're gonna do like relationship series later on, but like that was like the biggest struggle for me. And I, I didn't even realize like how big of a struggle it was. Like anytime like my fiance and I would have like arguments and I just would not apologize. I was just like, well, I was in wrong. I'm like, okay, sorry you feel that way. Like I was just like <laughs> like every time, like even if I had to apologize, I'd be like, sorry. Like, like no care in the world. And he just is like, you have to take accountability. And I'm just like, what? I didn't hurt you on purpose. Like, so it was just something that I didn't realize was such a problem, but I worked on it and I do apologize. He may disagree, but I feel like I apologize now. Um, but yeah, it's been like, this is still think about it. I have come to think about it, bringing it back to the sister thing. I've always been the only one to apologize. It's never you first. Yeah, I don't remember the last time you have apologized. I can bring up. It's always been me. Oh, I I apologize easily. I do with my friend. I will bring receipts. I will bring receipts because I don't you have a net. Can you remember when you have apologized to me? Ever? I just said I don't apologize. I admitted it. You just started here claiming. I will bring the receipts for it for everyone. I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. <laughs> Exhibit A, evidence that B. <laughs> Next week's post is <laughs> just receipts. Just receipts. We're <laughs> posting only receipts. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, wants to have a whole course. Like on the Instagram, we'll yeah. just have like our screenshots of here are the receipts. <laughs> like, so Jabba hilarious. was right. <laughs> it's like in Housewives when they're like done, they're like, well, this is what she had said. And the like, text message. They're like, this is the, the, the printout. And like, they go on there like live on Instagram and they read it. Well, what she had said was. Yeah. Like, oh. Do you remember in Potomac when, uh, I forget what her name was, but she had the binder. She was like, I've got oh receipts God. for you now. You <laughs> want me to read out his number? 619-703-400. Okay. And she was just like, that is his number. Yeah, <laughs> she literally was just like, yeah, that's the number. That's so funny. <laughs> so like, oh. But that's the one thing about Housewives, I feel like, became such a big, huge franchise is because of sisterhood, is because people were looking to see what do other sisterhoods look like? I mean, now it's pure trash, but I still watch. But like before, it really actually did start off as sisterhoods. Um, and I think that's why it blew up is because people were like, oh, these are like, it's a reflection of my friend group or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I remember when like Real Housewives of Atlanta was like doing well, not this season. And um, <laughs> I remember Solange commented on it. And she's like, the thing I like about Housewives, it's like, yeah. she's like, it reflects like my family friendships. It reflects the sisterhoods in my life. It reflects my mom's friendships. And she's like, because all the and everything. Yeah, she's yeah. like, this is how it is. It is like the shade being thrown. It is the laughter on the weekends going on girls trip. It is the annoyance of like, this person said something. Why didn't you just tell me to my face? It is all those things. And and I was like, oh, that's true. You know, like that's accurate. That's yeah. true. They just had to make it extra messy for viewers. Yeah. But exactly. <laughs> and always going on vacation where you know it's about to you get know. long. Every time and they'll always plan it. <laughs> She'll be like, I just want to plan this trip for all of us to just connect and get rid of all the drama. And like we're like, you know, that's when the drama's gonna <laughs> <laughs> you know they pay off for the drama like they're not out here like go to costa rica everyone's just chill and zen they'll just throw a fire in there and be like can you set it alight Turn <laughs> yeah. away from the fire really horrible um we love, we love it though <laughs> exactly but this was really lovely i was also a bit nervous java as well when i came up with the when we were uh, talking about the sisterhood thing and i was like hmm, what are we going to talk about i don't know what i'm going to say like you know where are we going to take this sisterhood thing and i think it it's very much it reminds me of their relationships with my sisters because I always feel like I have to anticipate how they're going to react or how they're going to feel or how they're going to do. But the moment that I'm there, it's like nothing that I would have thought of. And it's actually so much better or so much worse, depending. Um, but it, 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 it just, I guess I'm going to get into the takeaways now, like Al likes to remind us to do, um, is to remember to not anticipate other people's emotions or their feelings, but to communicate instead. Because for me, communicating has been a really, really big thing, even though I, I thought I was a great communicator. <laughs> uh, now I am, and I'm getting very, very much better at it as well. Yeah, I think even for the takeaway, like, what do you feel like sisterhood should look like? Or what is a great aspect of sisterhood that you appreciate? Mm -hmm. And you wish other people had that for themselves kind of thing? I think it's, <laughs> I think it's the negotiating. I think it's the recognizing that, like, if you want to make this 
a lifelong relationship. It's the continual negotiating and recognizing that, you know, we're going to move through life in different phases. I was just thinking about it. I'm like, all my friends have kids now, like pretty much all my friends, except for like us crew have kids. I'm like, so now I have to think about like all my hangout with them. I want to like have a girl's night. Wait, babies, wait. Auntie L. I'm like, right? I'm Auntie L, which is great. <laughs> but like thinking back to like five years ago when we we're like, let's just go out downtown. I mean, not coronavirus, but like it's the negotiating going, okay, how am I um, going to move forward and not be like sad and jealous that like I can't have my friend, but also like support them and have them support me and still have that open communication. So it's, again, adding a, another layer onto what Pal- Palesa said. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll still keep mine as communication. Talk to each other. Talk, talk to each other. Woo! Mm. At first I was like, is this an actual song? I was like, no. <laughs> I thought Valesa just to make up for a song. <laughs> oh my gosh, I, should, I should do a Black Woman Connect Vancouver like theme song. Oh, I should not put this out here. People. <laughs> yes. Well, I've told Palessa that she has to make a whole compilation of all of yes. songs. I'm going to push this until it happens. So, yes. Because we have voice records, so. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> do it. Jo, I will do it one day. Once I get somebody to help me organize my life, we're doing it. It's coming at you. Yes. Jo, what's the takeaway? Um, I think for me, I kind of always think about like there's that proverbs in the Bible that like iron sharpens iron. And I think that's like what I think about when I think about friendships or sisterhoods, like any type of relationship really is just like it can be uncomfortable, but being able to work through those conflicts, um, being able to give them space to grow, like having a space to be vulnerable, to like be yourself. Um, I mean, I'm saying a lot but it's like it's such a loaded thing but for me it's like yeah like iron sharpens iron and also one thing that I will say is working on your own insecurities because I found like at times when you're jealous of friends or when you're jealous of your sister it's you're like you're gaslighting and like you're projecting onto them because you're not working on like your own issues because I've had times where I'm like why do I feel like not happy for this person and it's like oh because Like it's something within me that I need to work on. And then when I work on that, I can be genuinely happy for my friends, genuinely happy for my sisters. And like, I think that's something that's really important because when we talk about those friendships that we're frustrated with or like they don't trust us, like they might also be harboring those feelings as well and just like projecting onto us and they're not happy for us because they need to work on themselves. So I think that's my takeaway. Mm -hmm. What is my takeaway? Um, my takeaway is it's complicated, it's frustrating, but it's beautiful and it's evolving. And I think that so much, we don't talk about the evolving part of sisterhoods and our friendships um, and not even necessarily like we all grow, we all change all the time. And as we evolve and change, that person's evolving and changing. Let's have grace for each other in that change. Um, in the friendships that are intentional, not this like toxic relationship. And I think sometimes even as we grow and change and evolve, sometimes people feel like, well, I'm growing and I'm changing and they're not, but maybe they're changing in their own journey at a different time and allowing that person to do that at the same time. So you may have to distance yourself, but not in a toxic way and that's okay, but like still genuinely care for that person. So I feel like sometimes when people think sisterhood, it's like, we fight, we argue, and we're still together, we're best friends, and hang out every weekend. I'm like, sometimes it is just an evolving thing of like, okay, I'm changing this month. And as I grow out of this, you're doing that, and then we'll come back. And so yeah. just allowing that space, I think, especially as Black women, we don't allow grace as much in our friendships and our sisterhood. And I think sometimes that space needs to be allowed to kind of let that person grow and be who they need to be in that moment. Yeah. Yes, I love it. Um, this has been really, really awesome. And um, yeah, I hope that you enjoy. Please put in the comments all your experiences with your sisters. We're going to be posting their receipts. Bring your receipts. <laughs> Tell us, what are they doing? What have they done? To you? And also, how has your relationship with them evolved? Um, uh, yeah, over time. Thank you, NJ, for joining us. We love to have you. Um, Thanks for having me. You did wonderful. I know you were nervous, but you did wonderful. I know, yeah. You know me and videos. 
<laughs> you did wonderful well we'll see thank you soon hopefully yeah thanks for having me and thanks for this conversation it's been great like Palessa said I'd be interested to see what everyone has to say in the comments and I will be bringing the receipts to you guys oh. in our little <laughs> group chat <laughs> I need to like prove my case <laughs> but yeah thank you guys I'll be I'm here for it <laughs> How are you? How are you feeling after that? I think it's good. It's always funny to have sister talks with other people who have sisters because it's like you understand, right? It doesn't sound so like dramatic when you're like, we used to do this and pour water on each other and pull her hair. It's like we're just like, yeah, totally. <laughs> like other people be like, my mother would never. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I remember uh, very clearly chasing my sister around the house with a butter knife because she used my sharpener when I told her not to use my sharpener because that is my sharpener and I don't care what kind of crayons or pencils you have okay I told I done told you okay not to bring her out she here she running after you now okay don't mess with me so exactly. I was the one that stole Java's clothes because I was always smaller so I'd always like sneak into her room or like and then there's always so annoying because like you'd find like back in the day it's like you'd wait till the pictures were developed and you see that she wore her like I would wear her clothes and then she's like I saw this picture of like well blah, blah blah or like I'd sneak in wash it really quickly sneak it back in and try to fold it in like exact same place and yeah I was always stealing the clothes so it was always like a thing yeah how feels calls that called that I know I would hate you that was sharp Charlotte did to, oh. all, Charlotte did to me and Nick all the time what she would do too is she would like we'd ask her for the clothes and she'd be like no and then when we were looking for it somewhere else she'd go in and sneak it back into our drawers and we come back we're gaslit we're like we looked here and like she's like I guess you didn't I know, totally. I would always find ways, always. <laughs> so it's very activating to hear that. Of, like, I don't know. I don't know, Natasha. I don't Honestly, know. One of our biggest fights were because I would steal her clothes. Okay. I, used to, I used to do that with my mom's shawls as well. You know how your mom always has like the really cute, cozy sweaters because they make really cute stuff for moms. And so I'd always like wear it. And obviously, you know, going to school and come back is before your parents come back. And I'd put it back in her cupboard and she'd always be like, oh, why does it look different in here? And I'm like, I don't know. You no, know, I packed up your room for you afterwards. I must have just put it back in there, mom. Don't worry about it. Or sometimes I would forget to put it back and it'd be folded on my bed. And she'd walk past my room and she's like, Bali, Bali, why is my shawl here? Bali. And I'm like, mom, I, I don't know. Maybe did you leave? Maybe I was folding laundry. I don't know. Wow. All the times I was busy wearing my mom's things at school, being so cool, like, ah. I'm the cool kid. Yeah, absolutely. Wild. Absolutely wild. Um, but if you want to find out more about the Girl You Know It podcast, you can find us on Instagram at girl.youknowit. Look at me remembering. Okay. Um, at Girl You Know It. Um, comment. Let us know in the comment what your relationships with your sisters were like or sisterhood and friends. We look forward to chatting a lot more about these types of conversations and having some light but serious chats. So thanks for joining us. Bye. See you next time. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the episode. It's always amazing to get an opportunity to chat with these lovely ladies. So if you're looking to follow us off of the podcast and you're looking to catch up with some of the content that we have, you can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and on YouTube, all at Black Women Connect Vancouver. And we also have a website for you at blackwomenconnectvancouver.com which is where you can sign up for our mailing list and our newsletter so you can keep updated with our growth and all of the other events that we have planned for you. Catch you later. Bye.